Between the Kim Jong-un regime and President Trump has tension growing on the Korean Peninsula right now. CNN's Brian Todd is working the story for us. Uh, Brian, North Korea is making new threats as the U.S. warships approach the region. They certainly are, Wolf. Tonight we're told U.S. intelligence officials are watching for any signs that North Korea will conduct another nuclear or missile test in the coming days, including the birthday of Kim Jong-un's grandfather this Saturday. Now, this comes as tensions on the Korean Peninsula are at their highest levels in years, with with an ominous warning coming earlier today from Kim. A stunning new look tonight at the public facade of the brutal North Korean regime. Kim Jong-un, in newly released video, strutting center stage at a gathering of his hand-picked elites, who dutifully applaud the dictator. On state TV, a fawning news anchor narrates the gathering, the Supreme People's Assembly. At the same time, Kim Jong-un is conducting this show of political force. Kim's regime is warning America over the deployment of the U.S. aircraft carrier Carl Vinson and its strike group to the waters off the Korean Peninsula. Calling it an act of aggression, a regime statement hand-delivered to CNN says, quote, if the U.S. dares to choose a military option, the DPRK is willing and ready to react to any mode of war desired by the U.S. I think it's North Korea essentially saying, look, we are pursuing nuclear weapons for a reason. This is exactly why you are the world's most powerful nuclear power. If you dare to strike us, we will strike back. A U.S. defense official tells CNN the carrier group was sent to patrol near North Korea because of Kim's recent provocations. His missile tests and tests of engines for intercontinental ballistic missiles. Tonight, CNN is learning more specific information about what the U.S. carrier group could do off North Korea's coast if ever ordered to strike. Analysts say the Vincent Strike Group has two destroyers and a cruiser with more than 300 combined missile tubes. They carry the same types of Tomahawk missiles the U.S. fired into Syria and could shoot down some North Korean missiles if they're test fired. The CG-47, the Lake Champlain, this uh, smaller ship on the right, uh, carries over 100 vertical launch missiles. Uh, some of those would be equipped to be able to interdict a shorter or medium range ballistic missile. Will those American warships be ordered to shoot down North Korean missiles if they're test fired while the carrier group is nearby? Pentagon officials won't comment. But the movement of the warships comes as President Trump tweets, North Korea is looking for trouble, and that if China doesn't help, quote, we will solve the problem without them. Experts worry tonight about a point of no return for the tough-talking leaders of the U.S. and North Korea. The two leaders could indeed be headed for a collision course, um, essentially a game of chicken. And many worry that once they're on this path, there's no U-turn or left turn or, or a stop. And don't look for China to help steer the two leaders off that path. Despite President Trump's messages to China, even saying that a Chinese trade deal with the U.S. would be better for Beijing if it helps with North Korea, the Chinese president has made no promises of specific action to rein in Kim Jong-un. Wolf? Brian, how vulnerable is that U.S. aircraft carrier strike uh, force uh, uh, to, North Korea, to a potential North Korean attack if Kim's regime decides to go after it. Well, Wolf, there are three things that Kim could throw at that carrier group. He could throw ballistic missiles, attack planes, and submarines. But one weapons expert tells us the Vincent Strike Group is ready for all three. He says North Korea's missiles are not sophisticated enough to hit the carrier group before they would be blasted out of the sky. North Korean planes wouldn't stand a chance against the American attack planes on the carrier. And he says the U.S. would deploy attack submarines along along with the carrier group, which could detect and take out North Korean subs, which this expert says are very noisy. Brian Todd reporting for us. Thanks very much, Brian. Uh, a final story for us tonight, the cost of President Trump's... Welcome to the Trump Breaking News Network, your daily source for up-to-the-minute Trump news. Join us today and every day. Here's today's news. This is TBNN. Trump's North Korea options place nukes in South Korea or kill Kim Jong-un. By Tyler Durden. With Syria down, it's now North Korea's turn. According to NBC News, the National Security Council has presented the suddenly ragingly bellicose President Trump with several options to respond to North Korea's nuclear program, put American nukes in South Korea or kill dictator Kim Jong-un. The scenarios were prepared in advance of Trump's meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping this week. The White House has expressed hopes the Chinese will do more to influence Pyongyang through diplomacy and enhanced sanctions, but if that fails, 
and North Korea continues its development of nuclear weapons, there are other options on the table that would significantly alter U.S. policy. While General John Hyten, the commander of U.S. Strategic Command, maintained on Wednesday that any solution to the North Korea problem has to involve China a senior intel official told NBC he doubted U.S. and China could find a diplomatic solution to the crisis. We have 20 years of diplomacy and sanctions under our belt that has failed to stop the North Korean program, said the official involved in the review. I'm not advocating preemptive war, nor do I think that the deployment of nuclear weapons buys more for us than it costs, but he stressed that the U.S. was dealing with a war-to-day situation. The nuclear option would mark the first overseas nuclear deployment since the end of the Cold War a move that would promptly provoke global condemnation, not least of all by China. It was not immediately clear if South Korea's regime, in turmoil recently following the recent impeachment and arrest of ex-President Park, had been consulted with the proposed strategy. The U.S. withdrew all nuclear weapons from South Korea 25 years ago. This option is also facing domestic pushback, I don't think that, deploying nuclear weapons, is a good idea. I think that it will only inflame the view from Pyongyang, retired Admiral James Stavridis and former NATO commander told NBC News. I don't see any upside to it because the idea that we would use a nuclear weapon even against North Korea is highly unlikely. South Korea's sentiment aside, NBC notes that the U.S. Air Force leadership doesn't necessarily support putting nuclear weapons in South Korea. As an alternative, it's been practicing sorties right out of the depths of the Cold War, long-range strikes with strategic bombers, sending them to the region for exercises and deploying them in Guam and on the peninsula as a show of force. The second, and just as controversial option, is to kill North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and other senior leaders in charge of the country's nuclear program. The overt regime overthrow option has huge downsides, said Mark Lippert the former U.S. ambassador to South Korea, who also served as an assistant defense secretary under President Barack Obama. Discussions of regime change and decapitation tends to cause the Chinese great pause of concern and tends to have them move in the opposite direction we would like them to move in terms of pressure, he said. Quoted by NBC, Stavridis said that decapitation is always a tempting strategy when you're faced with a highly unpredictable and highly dangerous leader, especially for a nation like the U.S. he did not add. The question you have to ask yourself, he said, is what happens the day after you decapitate? I think that in North Korea, it's an enormous unknown. In any case, the groundwork has already been laid, as reported one month ago, elite U.S. forces including Delta Force and SEAL Team 6 have been conducting drills on taking out Kim Jong-un, as well as practicing tactical North Korea infiltration. All they need is the green light. A third, bonus option, is covert action, infiltrating U.S. and South Korean special forces into North Korea to sabotage or take out key infrastructure, for instance, blowing up bridges to block the movement of mobile missiles. The CIA which would oversee such operations, told NBC News it could offer no guidance on this option. But Stafford has said that he felt it was the best strategy should the U.S. be forced to take military action. He described such action as, some combination of special forces with South Korea and cyber. One wonders if the CIA creating a false flag attack on South Korea, or China, using chemical weapons was one of the options under consideration. Trump has already indicated he's open to unilateral action if China fails to rein in its ally, telling the Financial Times last weekend, if China is not going to solve North Korea, we will. Until last night, his words were largely dismissed as more bluster, however having just demonstrated how quickly Trump is willing to launch offensive operations, having you turned on his Syrian position in less than a week. Suddenly the possibility of nuclear war with an irrational adversary does not look all that distant. That's the news. Join us here every day. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. See you next time. This is TBNN.